What's up everybody, it's Drew Wilkins with Swine and Bovine Barbecue, and in this video I'm gonna show you how I made some absolutely delicious barky direct heat beef ribs. Let's get going. Got ourselves a nice big rack of beef short plate ribs. Got these in a two pack from Costco. They're certified Angus beef choice ribs. As I mentioned in my last beef rib video, it's a little overkill to go prime, even though I did cook prime that time. It's because I got them from Wild Fork. These are choice. This is more than enough for the marbling and fat we need. If you can see the side on these, we're not gonna be hurting for any marbling whatsoever. I don't really trim beef ribs. This does have some like pull apart stuff on top. So let's get that off. Let's use a little knife to help. If this was just fat, then I would leave it on, but that doesn't seem fun to eat. This corner here is a little pointy, so I'll just kind of round that off. Trimming's done. This is what we trimmed off these beef ribs. Let's season them. We're gonna use a binder for our beef ribs. Just going on with some Worcestershire sauce for our binder. For the first seasoning, we're going with some coarse black pepper and diamond crystal kosher salt. It's a 50-50 mix. Just a light coating on the back side here. I do leave the membrane on for beef ribs. If I didn't, it'd probably end up sliding off the bone. The meat wouldn't stick to it, so the membrane is crucial to leave on. And then we're gonna come over the top of that kosher salt and black pepper with a 50-50 mix of granulated onion and granulated garlic. Flip it over, do the other side. These bad boys are seasoned up. Let's go fire up the pit. Pit's cruising along between 275, 300, which is exactly where we want it. So we're gonna place our beef ribs right in the center here. So we're gonna let these beef ribs go for quite a while. No need to flip them after an hour like we do with our pork ribs. Obviously these are much thicker. They're gonna take a lot longer to cook. When everything's looking solid, we'll flip them over and get that meat side some color. But for now, we're shutting it down and gonna let them cook. We are right at about two hours in, so let's see how our beef ribs are looking. Looking good so far. Got some great pullbacks on the bones. Looking fantastic. Oh yeah, that underside is looking awesome. So we're gonna flip these over, let them go meat side down for a little bit, but in the interim, let's go make a mop sauce. For our mop sauce, we're gonna start out with half a stick of butter. Butter's melted, so we're gonna go in with half a onion. Also gonna toss in a handful of garlic. Onions and garlic have reduced, they smell fantastic, so we're gonna go in with a pint of beef broth. Also gonna go in with a healthy amount of Worcestershire. Also gonna go in with a couple of healthy pinches of salt. We're gonna go with a little hot sauce. Mix everything together and our mop sauce is done. Our beef ribs have been meat side down for about 30 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and hit this membrane side with some of our mop. <laughs> Smelling incredible. If I do this one more time in about 15 minutes, we'll flip them over. About an hour after we originally flipped them, let's go ahead and flip these back over to the meat side up. We mopped these three times Oh, baby. <laughs> Those are looking absolutely delicious. Feeling nice, like they're starting to get tender. We were around 195, 197 when I checked them just a little bit ago. So we're getting close, but now let's mop this top side a few times. Got a nice blower going in the background here. We're just gently gonna mop this. Got a little bit of a flare up at the bottom. Not a surprise given the fact that these are beef ribs. They got a lot of fat and they're dripping a lot down. And we're putting a sauce that's got some butter in it on top of them. So I'll take care of that and blow it out here in a second. These are looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna shut this down. We'll continue to mop these every 10-ish minutes until they're nice and tender. Our beef ribs are looking fantastic. Towards the bottom, we're temping right where we want to and they're feeling really tender, but up towards the top, not so much. So I'm actually gonna flip these over one more time and let them cook meat side down. I've mopped them probably three times up top. We'll hit this backside with a little bit of mop as well, but I'm guessing maybe 15-ish minutes with the meat side down and these should be ready to go. 15 minutes later and our beef ribs are pretty much done. 
Some great, great direct heat color on these suckers. I am gonna mop them one more time, let it sit for about five minutes, and then these are ready to pull. Our beef ribs are done and they are looking and smelling absolutely fantastic. This is my first time doing direct heat beef ribs. I'm ecstatic to dig into these things. They smell unreal. But we gotta wait a little bit to dig in. These need to come down to 140 before we slice into them. So I am going to tint these lightly in aluminum foil and we'll be back when they hit 140. Our beef ribs have cooled down to 140 and are looking absolutely delicious. Got a nice bark on them. Got a nice flavor from the mop sauce. So we've waited long enough. Let's dig in. Time to cut into these bad boys. So we're gonna go at a little bit of an angle right here. We'll start with this back rib. Cut between the bones. Oh, that looks fantastic. Got nice marbling. I'm not gonna squeeze it up, do a little squeeze. You can see it's incredibly juicy. Got plenty of juice in it. So this one's looking awesome. Let's go ahead and cut this next one off. We don't really have to go at an angle with these as much as I thought they would. All of them have a lot on the bone. So that's a good thing. Yeah, those. It doesn't get much more juicy than that. You got marbled fat, little seam right in there is rendered. That is super, super juicy. Let's eat. The work is done and we have ourselves some delicious looking beef ribs. Cooked these for about four hours is what it took. They were probing tender right around the 203, 205-ish area. They're full of juice, simply seasoned with coarse black pepper, kosher salt, and a little bit of granulated onion and garlic. Mopped with a little bit of sauce when it was needed, and these are ready to go. So these probably would have taken nine to 10 hours on an offset, and we were able to cook them in four hours on direct heat. So it doesn't have the all too familiar smoke ring, although it does actually have a little bit of red on the top there. I'm not sure if that's coming into focus, but it does have a little bit of red, like it got some smoke. There was no wood in there, it was just burnt coals. So I'm not sure why that is, but enough talking, let's dig in. Cheers. That's incredible. The mop sauce was completely different than what I typically do on direct heat spare ribs, pork ribs, but it's got a lot of the same characteristics. It's a little bit of tang. Now there was some Worcestershire, or not some, there was a good amount of Worcestershire in it, and that has a pretty unique flavor, and that's definitely coming through. But a lot of it's just the outer crust of these beef ribs. It's, it's got a lot of the same characteristics as a spare rib, really good. It's got that undeniable direct heat flavor. You can taste it, it was above coals. Fully juicy, full of fat. They reduced quite a bit and a lot of that fat, like five minutes when I put them on, it started generating the smoke fat that you get with direct heat barbecue. Didn't take long and a lot of that flavor comes through on these ribs. They are phenomenal. Cut off a little piece here. The crust on these beef ribs have a flavor like I've never had before. I think it's better than what you get from a pork spare rib when it's cooked direct heat. And a lot of it's probably due to that thin layer of fat that we left on these beef ribs. So don't trim those off. But that fat combined with a rub, combined with a mop sauce makes for an incredible flavor. And I will say these ribs were probing like absolute butter, but they are not nearly as tender as the beef ribs I made a few videos back. Literally, I could drop my probe into it and no resistance whatsoever. However, there's a decent amount more bite to these. Now, it's not overly chewy. It's not getting stuck in my teeth like it's beef jerky or a sirloin steak, but it's not as tender as the smoke trip. So maybe you need to take it longer for direct heat, but I mean, you can see everything was rendered in here. It's coming up like the seam in here. It's coming apart nicely. I don't know if that's a product of the direct heat cooking or if you just need to take it further, but my probe, and I don't go by temperature. I mean, I'd, I'd have taken these things to 220 had I needed to in order to get them tender, but I was using the probe and it was telling me they were done, but it's not a bad bite, but it's definitely noticeably more of a bite than it is when I cook them on an offset. Yeah, I can't recommend giving these a shot enough. If you've got a direct heat cooker, give these a go. Maybe take them beyond probe tender. It's kind of goes against everything that we ever hear or I've ever said is go by tenderness, not by temperature. It's what I did here, but 
they again have a little bit more of a bite to them so maybe because they cooked for four hours instead of the traditional eight to ten that it takes in an offset you need to take them beyond that to fully make sure you get some of this fat rendered because uh, that might be the issue but again if you have an idea feel free to leave it in the comments below I'd love to know because this flavor is absolutely fantastic and if you could get the tenderness to where it is on a offset cooker or pure smoked beef rib then that would be awesome but again it's not a terrible bite it's just a little chewier I had high hopes for this cook and it absolutely delivered can't recommend giving this a go enough so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps out if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you cook anything from one of my videos, feel free to tag me on Instagram. My handle is at swine and bovine BBQ. And if you have any ideas on what you want to see me cook next, leave it in the comments below. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.